to Midwest Hunting and Outdoors by Two Dumbasses. This episode is about focusing on two specific exotic and evasive species that, uh, uh, that I have and, and Iowa is dealing with. So um, one of them is the wild garlic mustard, which is coming up. Uh, but the first one I want to talk about is honeysuckle. So, um, for something that has such a sweet name as uh, honeysuckle, and my wife is a beekeeper and loves honeysuckle, and so do the bees, it is the absolute worst stuff to deal with. Um, let's talk about plant identification first. First of all, honeysuckle is a branching and bushy type uh, plant, tree. Um, it reminds me a lot of uh, lilac, but uh, uh, very worse. So it usually starts off in a clump, and then as it gets taller, it will branch out and, and keep branching out. And uh, it, it literally smothers anything on the ground below it. No, nothing's going to grow because it just shades everything out. The other thing with honeysuckle is, is it grows so fast that it is... Uh, um, it, it literally is, is impossible for anything else to keep up with it and it just chokes everything out. So honeysuckle, I'll, sh I'll show you what the bark looks like and we'll, we'll talk to the plants. But um, honeysuckle is, uh, um, this is a branch of a honeysuckle tree. And uh, again, kind of oval or tear shaped leaves. And then the leaves are complete, directly opposite of each other on, on the branch. And um, again, very, very fast growing. And uh, so let's take, a look at, let's take a look at what the tree itself or the bush looks like. It's so as you can see, as you look uh, to the honey uh, suckle branch um, and trunk of the tree, usually there's three, four, five, six sprouts coming out of the main uh, uh, root system and uh, the bark is very distinct it runs uh, vertical up the side of the tree and then uh, branches out from there so as you take a look into that mess of honeysuckle um, that is a lot of work and a lot of uh, a lot of plants and, and you really don't see anything else in there except for honeysuckle. It uh, chokes everything else out. Okay, so what do you do if you have honeysuckle? First and the easiest is uh, get it when it's small and pull it out by the roots and uh, put it in a garbage bag and throw it away or burn it. Um, but uh, um, if it's grown over like I've got, then really your only option is, is to cut it. Uh, however, I would warn you when you do cut it, uh, make sure to treat the stump with Tordon, glyphosate, uh, crossbow, um, something of that nature. And the reason I say that is because if you look right behind me here, um, this is some work that I did. In February and March of this year, I've been trying to cut back my honeysuckle and, and manage this the best I can. Um, but I cut this stump up, and you can see how much it's grown just from March through the end of May. Um, so if you don't go back and spray this, uh, it, it'll continue to grow, and, and within a year or two, it's going to be as big if not bigger um, than when you started. So make sure that you are, um, you know, no one likes to use a lot of herbicides, but in this case, you've got to be very selective and spray the stump and soak the stump if you're cutting it off or let it grow back like this and spray it. Now I just sprayed this last night and you're already seeing some wilting and whatnot on the leaves. So. I'm pretty confident that um, I'm going to have a pretty good kill on, on uh, what I sprayed last night. So anyway, get out there and enjoy the outdoors, but uh, kill as much honeysuckle and, 
and uh, upcoming here uh, make sure you're focusing on that uh, live garlic mustard and uh, let's take care of our habitats thank you for watching wild garlic mustard and uh, I'm going to show you some pictures of that but it's right behind me um, we just learned about this two or three years ago from our DNR, DNR forester and biologist and uh, since we've learned about it we've just finding it everywhere so uh, a little bit about this plant uh, so you can identify it it is going to be one of the first plants that you're going to see green in your forest come February or March. So very, you know, very late winter, very early spring. Uh, the competitive advantage this plant has is it's willing to, uh, it's willing to grow very fast and very early. Um, in the in the winter, it's going to have heart shaped. It's going to look almost like a dandelion with heart shaped leaves, and it's going to be flat to the ground. But as you're going to see here in a minute, as summer, spring and summer progresses, there's a stem that comes right out of the middle of the, uh, of the plant. And these things will get three, four, five feet tall. If you're ever in doubt if it's uh, wild garlic mustard, you can take a couple leaves, grind them in your hand, and smell them. It will be reeking, reeking like garlic. As I'm standing here right now, I, I can smell it without even, even uh, rubbing the, the leaves. But uh, let me give you some better close-ups of this plant, and we can talk a little bit more about it. So again, the, what you're looking for here is, uh, this is June 1st. Um, so, you know, these obviously have grown and uh, maturing pretty well. Uh, but tall, stemmy plants, kind of heart-shaped leaves. And again, uh, a, good, a good test. Take a couple leaves and, and smell them. You're going to... Uh, you're going to smell, they're going to reek like garlic. Um, the other thing is, is that these things uh, will get seeds. So do, do not, do not uh, mow them over and expect to kill them. In fact, if you mow them, all you're going to do is spread them further. You'll usually find them in, in small circular spots like this. This is a perfect, this is a great example of what I would expect from uh, wild garlic mustard. Um, kind of a, just a small patch, but just filthy with them. If you pull them up, if you pull them up, um, they really have a, a big tap root. And, and again, that's what makes them survive is these things can uh, live through droughts and, uh, and uh, very hardy plants. Hmm, garlic. Um, if you do pull them up, uh, make sure you put them in a garbage bag and take them out with you. Again, these things will, uh, uh, from one seed, one plant, uh, they'll just take over. All right, so how we're going to treat these is uh, I've got a little bit of a cocktail here. Roundup glyphosate works great on this. Um, this is a little bit of a mix of glyphosate and uh, 2,4-D. Um, Crossbow uh, is the brand name. But uh, we're going to spray these, and uh, we'll come back in a couple weeks and check on them, and uh, go from there. Missouri Hybrids has been a family-owned business since the 1930s. Located in historic Keosauqua, Iowa, Aaron and his team are a one-stop shop for farmers, hunters, and landowners. For your conservation program, CRP, food plots, and all planting needs, give Aaron at IMH a call and tell him the two dumbasses sent you.
Established in 1934, Pete and Shorty's is located on Main Street, Clarksville, Iowa. Pete and Shorty's is famous for their half-pound burgers, hand-breaded tenderloins, and homemade pizza. The beer is always cold, and the Bloody Marys are the best in town. Stop in and tell Mike and Amy that the two dumbasses sent you. Thanks for listening or watching our show. We have some exciting topics and guests coming up. We ask that you subscribe to our channel on YouTube and follow us on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. We look forward to hearing your suggestions for topics, questions, and comments. This is Two Dumbasses signing off. Until next time, be be safe, safe, have have fun, fun, and and get get outdoors. outdoors.